Okay, right now I've uh, I've just thought of a subject for a, for a star trail. Um, when when you're doing star trails, you what you really want is a nice subject that you can put in the foreground, and you can have all your trailing stars behind it. So I've I've thought of a subject. It's quite far from where I am now. The problem around here is that there's just a bit too many lights around here to do the sort of thing I want to do. So I've 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 got a subject in mind. So I'm going to go and drive down there and have a look at that and see which way I'm going to set the um, set the, the the shot up and we'll go through that. Right. Okay. So I think we'll just stick the radio on first. And while I'm on the way, we'll. Uh, go on a bit of a tour I think I'll take the scenic route and then hopefully well the weather isn't very good but then again this is England I suppose right so I'm now going to switch to the dash cam and now I'm on the way to the subject for my star trail we've arrived and the weather is terrible and this is the subject I've chosen this church here okay so the weather's pretty bad but I'm sure according to the weather forecast that it's going to clear up later on so I'll be able to do this shot so I'm just going to go outside now and see about how I'm going to go about setting up well here's another uh, potential subject for a star trail this this windmill this is Lytham windmill mm -hmm. the main problem with this windmill is that uh, it's not impossible to do a star trail from here, but there's so many lights around here. But it's not so much the lights, it's the, it's the floodlights that light up the, the windmill itself. They just, they seem to be on all night. I think they're on all night and they just completely uh, drown out any stars that you might capture. And they also just cause all sorts of flare and problems. I might choose that for another time if I can think of a way around the, around the lights. But for now, we're going to go for this church over here. I'm going to set the camera up over there. I know that I can get a shot from there. and. The thing about the church is that it's not floodlit at night so I can just use the, the lighting in the area to, to light it up. Let's go and see if we can do that. Okay, so here we are. This is going to be the subject for my star trail. And by the way, this is a, a licked, what they call a licked gate at the entrance. <coughs> at the entrance of the church, they have quite a few of these. And this is where my camera well, actually, I'm going to use this for now to shelter my camera from the rain. So, ideally, I'd want the camera somewhere up the path a little bit. But for now, I'm just using this lich gate to protect the camera from the rain. So, my idea is to put the camera on the tripod as it is there. I'll aim at the church. Now, I know... I know that Polaris is somewhere, is going to be somewhere up there. Now if I wanted to, if I wanted to, I could get into a position where Polaris was above the, um, above the steeple. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be stretching it and I, I just think if I put Polaris up there, I just think it's going to be stretching it too much. So for now, I'm going to aim to have Polaris around there so the idea is we'll get a nice circle that's the idea anyway and as for light in the church if you've got a subject in the foreground um, you want to make sure it, it's uh, quite well lit not too well lit that it overpowers the picture and these stars don't look you know these stars don't pop out but Luckily enough, we've got street lights. We've got, all the street lights are behind us, so so these street lights are going to throw a lot of light on, onto the church, and that will light it all up. 
so I won't need a torch or anything like that. Oh, just one more thing as well, which I didn't mention in the last video, and that's focusing. You want to make sure that your lens is set to infinity. That's that uh, figure of eight on the side. Make sure, I'm not sure if you can see here, but this lens here is set to infinity. So I know that uh, it's going to come out sharp. Right, okay. So it did clear up, believe it or not. And I managed to get my star trail shot with the church. Um, what I ended up doing was capturing it in portrait mode. That meant I turned the camera round so that uh, it was with the long end the other way around. So I turned the camera into portrait mode because the steeple uh, just suited that mode. I would have been trying to squeeze it in if I was in landscape mode. So I'll just click on one of the frames. So this is one of the frames and you can see that it did suit the portrait mode. Um, if I zoom in we can see that it's really really sharp. It's dead sharp. Uh, and I was talking about Polaris. Now I think that this star here is Polaris. I, from experience um, so that that is going to be the center of the rotation of, of the stars when, when we put all these together. Now just looking down here at the settings we can see that I chose an exposure time of 30 seconds at f2.8. The widest I could go with that lens 24mm ISO 400. Um, I think with star trails, remember I said you don't need to have a fast lens. I opened this lens up to f2.8 and ISO 400, so I'm collecting a fair bit of light there actually. But but what I would normally do is, if I wasn't uh, wanting to collect quite as much light as that, I could use less ISO and expose for a bit longer. What I ended up doing was locking the exposure, the, the intervalometer down, rather than programming a time. I ended up locking it down. So this, this exposure here worked out okay for the church. You might find that sometimes that that's too much. It depends. I mean, this church isn't lit up. It's not flood lit. There's no flood lights on it. All the light falling on that church is coming from the, the street lights around, which I quite like, really, because when the flood lit, it... Um, it's just too much. You can't incorporate a floodlit building into a star trail. It's it's virtually impossible. The only way you can really do it is to go to it when it's not floodlit and then try and do it then and maybe just light the building up with a torch or something like that. So anyway, this is one of the frames and um, I think I must have maybe an hour or so. I mean, I've got quite a few down here. I'll just check how many there is and uh, what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to process them in Lightroom. This is what I'm using now, Lightroom. I'm going to go through every... Uh, I'm going to select every frame and batch process all these. So there's all these two. I'm not going to go into too much detail now, but I've, I've um, corrected the lens profile, which is standard procedure in Lightroom. I've done a few tweaks just to get the stars popping out a little bit more. Um, so now I'm going to export these as JPEGs. Okay, so I'm now just going to open the uh, the stacking software. Now this is a program I use, and, and it's called Star Stacks, and this is very very easy to use. And if you're doing star trails, if you take a few pictures of star trails and you want to blend them together to make a a nice star trail picture. This is the sort of software that you want. There are other um, programs out there as well. They're all free as well, which is good. You don't have to pay for this. And it works very well. Okay, so I'm now going to um, bring these uh, files into Star Stacks. I'll find them first. Lizen Church. So these are all the files here that I've edited and exported as JPEGs. So I'm now going to open them. 
and they all list on the left hand side. Now there are other options you can use, I'm just going to use the standard default, there's blending options, you can do all sorts of fancy things with this. All I'm going to do now is just click stack and just watch what happens now. This is the fun bit. So you can see that the stars are beginning to rotate now. This will take a little while but it, it's fun watching the, watching the stars build up. Right, okay, we're almost at the end and it's looking really good. I'm really happy about this. Uh, it's, uh, it looks like it's worked really well. Um, the colour looks a bit strange. It's kind of, kind of bright, but that's just the way it looks at night. Um, the, you've got all sorts of different street light, all sorts of different lighting going on. We've mainly got street lights giving off the light on the church here. Um, there's some lights at the back not really a problem you will notice that there's a gradient here a light gradient now this is light pollution coming from the town where i live that's coming from blackpool so but but as i say with star trails you can take star trails anywhere you can take them from your back garden light pollution isn't really a problem for star trails it's not a problem at all the only thing you'll find is that you'll have less you'll see less stars if you look up here towards the pole star you'll see that all the stars around here are quite prominent very bright contrasty whereas down here uh, where all the light pollution is you're not seeing as many stars but it's not really a problem because um, the light pollution in, in, in many ways helps to pick out the the subject that you're, you're using as a foreground so in some cases light pollution can help now as you can see I've got Polaris here now I could have put it above the steeple or just above the steeple but I think I, I could have done that if I wanted to but I think it's a little bit cliched and you can get some cool effects by putting Polaris in, when you know where Polaris is when you know how to find it you say right if I put that on top of that thing there and then start my star trail off it'll look really cool and you can do that in fact I, I've done it myself but in this case all I wanted to do was to for this purpose was to take a picture of the church from the front with the path leading up to the, the steeple and just get the nice rotation of stars so and I think I've done that great so what I'm going to do now is just take this back out of this program I'm going to then go back into Lightroom make some final adjustments and then export it as a final picture okay so I've now just imported it back into um, Lightroom where I'm going to make my final adjustments to the picture before putting it out. Uh, I'm not entirely happy with the colour to be quite honest on this. It looks a bit strange and I'm just playing around with these to, to see if I can get the colour a little bit more. So if I tweak this a little bit I'll, I'll get the colour a little bit more like what it looks like. That doesn't look too bad so I think we'll probably go with that. So that's it. That's for this star trail. Um, I'll probably be doing some more but uh, that's the first one and um, there's, there's other ways of doing them and I've got other ideas on how to do star trails so I'm going to put the, the final picture on the end of the uh, <coughs> video so if, if this is the sort of thing that appeals to you uh, hit the like button and also subscribe and look forward to my future videos thank you